Hi guys, welcome to Tech Point Africa podcast and uh, my name is Oganero Munebo and uh, I'm sure you're wondering why I'm, you know, the one introducing the podcast today. But several things happened. First of all, Emmanuel is away on a program and Nifemi and Bolu are not feeling too well. So please keep them in your prayers and whether you pray or not, whether you believe in God or not. Cha, oh, think about this. <laughs> so yeah, I'm here with a couple of people, you probably recognize their faces. I have Tim Gosrim. Introduce yourself, please. Hello. Hi. Welcome to God. the podcast. What is this? What? Yinka. Hi, uh, I'm Yinka Awusaya. Yes, so Yinka is our research lead at Intel Point. Are you, can you see me <laughs> emphasizing Intel Point? <laughs> yes, because if you don't say Intel Point, Yinka will kill us. But Okay, you will not kill I'm us, but... Island. <laughs> but a little violent thank you for um, thank you i didn't i did not oh, see it <laughs> okay so yeah um before we move on into today's topic so this week has been a bit as well last week there have been a lot of policy changes and for example now they're saying we're going to pay more for electricity we are going to for subsidy and all of that i think for the past almost two months i mean almost two weeks we've been paying Five hundred naira to get to Ikeja from Bega. So yes, on some days it's even up to. What was the price before? Three hundred, four hundred. Depending on what time of the day. It's actually not up to like double. Doubled. It's crazy. It's actually no. It is now. No, no. So no when you pay seven hundred naira. Yeah, well, double. I've not paid seven hundred yet. But when you do five hundred, unfortunate. <laughs> but when you do five hundred, that's about sixty-three. I mean, sixty percent or. That's still high. Yeah. That's very yeah, high. It is. But at least uh, a lot of people have said they are paying double. Yeah. So For short trips in my area, it's double. Mm. And the last time I okay, used yes, to yes. the office, it used to be 400, 500. Mm. I did 700. So uh, that's not almost to, um, about 40% there about. So. Okay. Mm, my sympathies to everybody facing... I can I can definitely understand. It will be well with all of us in this country. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yeah, that brings us into what we're the first thing we're going to be talking about today. So Chim Gazim is going to help us dissect it. We are going to be talking about the ride hailing drivers and their strike. So they've been I think they went on strike June seventh. Was it June seventh? June seventh or June strike or a warning strike? Right. I, well, let's call it the warning strike using ASU's terminology. ASU is always okay. giving so warning strike. Of, let's just do this first. So you know what to plan. We we'll come to the table and then talk. Yeah. yeah. So, Tim was dream. Take it away. Tell us what's happening there. Okay. So, two weeks ago, ride right, drivers went on a warning strike. The strike ended like a week ago. Or so, so that's like the strike is over basically. But the reason they went for the strike was in relation to all the challenges with the fuel subsidy that was removed. So first, they are demanding a 200% hike in the cost or in the base fare for all the rides. So they, this is not just one ride hailing um, company. So they're talking about boats, in driver, everybody basically, um, a 200% so, hike. So um, lag ride part of this. I think I think lag ride is I think lag ride is really yeah oh, so okay. they want a two hundred percent hike so the um, right now they have called off the strike but they are still there's still the possibility so when I spoke with one of them they said uh, they are going to call off the strike and then watch to see what happens to determine if they go to the table and yeah have a discussion before they. Will so they've already done that. They've had discussions with, oh, with the I think they said they've had discussions with Uber and Bolt. Mm. And they told them, so apparently it wasn't just the price hike that they wanted. They wanted improved welfare conditions. They want to, they want the review of the commission they are paying. I think they want it to come down to 10%. Welfare <laughs> commission, they don't work, they are more like a partner. Uh, uh, like yeah, partners. No. Yeah. But they, they don't work they for want them. They work with, with them. them. Yes, when you they want using them with like it, using <laughs> it is even up to itself. Because I bring my car. Yeah, and you bring the customer providing the platform. The platform to for them. Yeah. yeah. 
So they are demanding for things like that. They also want the commission to be to reduced. Be, they've had that commission that thing has been on for a, like for a long time. At, yeah. it, at a point, it was dropped a little, reduced a little bit, mm. and then see. Uh, yeah, so they want that um, commission dropped, and it's interesting the way some people are going about it. So if you've if you hang out on Instagram a lot, you'd have seen a lot of ride hailing guys coming up. And the the I think there was one I saw is he high is he high ride or something. The value proposition for many of them is a ten percent commission. So I think I even saw five percent commission. So what I don't know, I mean, these guys are probably they are very new, so they probably don't they don't have the experience. Maybe, maybe, maybe the market to teach them. Yeah, the market to teach them something. That's Five percent is doing. low because come on, I know you're trying to do Can like customer acquisition salary? strategies and all of that. Mm-hmm. But look at Uber. Uber still hasn't made a profit, and their commissions are and that Uber like is bro. still heavy on customer acquisition. They are still yeah. like doing promo on customer acquisition. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I, in a way, I think this is um, they are solving one one part of the problem. So the drivers want to reduce commissions. And these guys are thinking, oh, if you give them reduced commissions, all will be well. But there's also the uh, the customer acquisition side. You will need to convince me to dump Uber or Bolt uh-huh. for you. So, of course, you can always do that with lower prices. But if you do it with lower prices, we will be able to uh, monitor quality across the board. Because we also have, so even though Uber and Bolt are able to, they, they have higher commissions, we still have a case where you enter a boat ride and there's no AC on, and we have people come, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, complaining about it. Yeah. So, but yes, that's. I don't that's mind, sure. You don't mind. <laughs> well, sometimes uh, if it's a long distance trip, I do mind. But if it's short distance, well, no voila. Yeah, but coming back uh, to like yes. the entire strike, um, strike mm-hmm. issue. So, how are the drivers themselves taking it? Because I saw throughout the, la- the strike, I think from the seventh to like fifteenth, or was it? Was it 15 the energy? 15, 15, I think. Yes. So throughout this strike, mm-hmm. I was still able to book rights. Yeah. Like, I didn't have any issues booking rights. So were people actually going on strike? Yeah. Was there any, like, what was happening with the drivers themselves? Because I know that um, there's a body, they call themselves, I don't know if I pronounce this, it's one long time. Uh, yeah, A-U-A-T-W-N. The acronym is very weird sounding. So are they, like, is it like they are on their own, doing their own thing, and the drivers are like, what are these ones doing? Like, what's happening with those guys? So, like you said, there's there's an association of all. It's supposed to be association of I think we call it um, amalgamated union, union of road based transport based, workers, something app like based. app based, yeah, app based transport workers. So there's that union. But what I can say for sure is that every driver is it's on, a part of it. yeah, is a part of it. I don't know. So I, I don't know what the um, the I don't know the rules that guide the organization. And how it was formed, so I, I can't say that it's mandatory for every rider to be on that platform. It's freedom of association, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. decide to be part so of it. Exactly. Also. So what happened is the, the after the strike was after it started, the something like this is really difficult to force uh, for you to implement it. It's mm-hmm. very difficult because you don't have a database of all the drivers in the country, all the riders in the country. So what happened was. This was people, some of the riders becoming tax force guys. So <laughs> they go around. And this is funny because one, it's not like you see one Camry on the road and you know that this is boat or mm-hmm. Uber. Because before someone can beat you up. <laughs> but what they were doing, uh, so I saw it from some of their um, communication. So they could order a ride and then they basically just send you around. Mm-hmm. That was the other tax force. Yeah, wasting your fuel because, of course, you Time. suffered to to get it and they did it a lot of them were doing so it was like voluntary because uh, I, I guess they just believe that if they can get all the drivers off the road that Uber will be forced to implement the changes <laughs> but what can that really work because it's not like a, a, a government work civil servant whereby I go on strike and I seek care of my salary at the end of the yeah. month mm-hmm. this is a case of if you don't work you're not getting anything yeah so I so the and this is why the the strategy is surprising, right? They are, like you mentioned, gig workers, and you only get paid when you work. So I I don't know why they thought that if the the moment they get all the drivers off, that Uber would be forced. I don't know if it was you that we were having that conversation yesterday. Um, 
So the, the will be forced to come to the table yeah. and agree to their terms. But the way I see it, if you stress me too much, Uber will go to the next country. Honestly. Or they shut down well, their operations can, for can a few months. They did that in Kenya. Yeah, was uh, was yeah. it then, where did so they do can, that at one point? But then the issue is not all the uh uh, uh drivers. The riders, yeah, the drivers who agreed to this. Of course, not all of them did and it, a lot of them complained about the yes, strike. They intimidate those that did, but they, yeah. they, 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 they a lot of them. Are, so some people said they didn't even know about the strike. <laughs> some people said this strike. We, okay, so one person said the spirit behind the strike makes sense, but the demands do not make sense. And yes, that's argument, another thing I was going to ask because yeah. it's one hundred percent increase. Like what's happening? His argument well, was that <laughs> yes, you can argue that it doesn't make sense, but when you look at the fact that the price of uh, transportation of okay off by almost one and sixty something percent mm. so then like, okay yes at least yeah on the uh uh, uh um right side mm-hmm. you should be able to pay 100 percent increase yeah but here's the thing the calculations we were doing earlier about how much it costs us these days None of the none of the price hikes is up to seventy percent. Yes. So. So yes, the reason why that might be is now well, this is me playing the devil's advocate on mm. behalf of the drivers. <laughs> 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 Sorry. So, um, public bus. Yeah, they have a lot of carrying. People. Yes, okay. we're not carrying one person. But if I pick you here mm. and I'm taking you to the highland. Yeah. If I'm before I'm person. using ten liters, now I'm still going to use ten liters. Mm. The only difference now is. Now, 10 liter before would cost me one or 80 something mm-hmm. but now it's costing me 5k yeah. yeah so to be fair so Uber it's fair for me to ask you to pay, pay more. double well it and you so asked me to pay double but you're not going to ask me to pay quad was 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 um was quadruple now so four pi- mm-hmm. yeah so oh, is it is it two hundred percent that they are? Actually yes, 100%. it's not. Like it's not a hundred percent increase. It's two hundred percent. Okay, so increase. the fuel removal of this first subsidy actually make the price jump from one ninety to five, which is about one hundred and sixty percent increase. Mm. Mm. So if they're asking for two hundred, maybe that's not too bad. Well, here's the problem, uh, and this so this is from me as a user and from some of the drivers. One of the drivers we spoke with said. Um, it's not like this fuel subsidy affects a section of the population and doesn't affect every other person. It affects, it affects everyone. So the riders too, they are having to... So it's not like it affects... Maybe I should put it better. It, it doesn't affect just the transportation sector. So I went to buy tomatoes the other day and I realized that the cost has gone, gone up. Gone up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was within the same period. Mm-hmm. And I've not uh, paid for a lot of other things recently. So I'm assuming that every other yeah, right. thing is going to be yep. affected. If mm-hmm. it's affected, it means that while salary, so GT Bank uh, had to increase the salary of some of their junior employees. It's not happening for everybody. <laughs> so if your salary mm. is not increasing, mm. but yeah. your, your expenses, expenses are, are increasing, increasing. See, the first thing that goes in, in unnecessary expenses like is, is anything that looks like luxury. So, for example, I may not. I may decide to buy only one sachet of milk. We have been buying two or three, and considering that Uber for a lot of people is just extra comfort, I could decide to use public transport. And a lot of Nigerians will use public transport. Actually, since um, yes, me waving my hand. Since removal of the <laughs> subsidy, so like notice the number of cars on Lagos Road has reduced seems to have <laughs> reduced yes because like, normally it takes us about 40 minutes to get to the mm-hmm. it's now about 20 25 minutes already because there are fewer cars on the road there's people, no money to fire your car the first few weeks it was that you couldn't even find the fuel yeah now yeah, people are like okay well the yeah, fuel there's fuel yeah, but you don't have money it's costing me more to fuel my car so yes. should i do it so there's a it's, lot it's difficult and maybe they should also take a leave from what happens in other countries so this challenge of um, commission increasing the price it's, it's not a uniquely nigerian challenge it's, yeah. it's it happens everywhere and one of the examples so the article we wrote about it one of the examples we gave was um the case in in new york so drivers in u.s always complain about this i think um one of the reports i read the driver was saying that by the time he's done with all the payments he has barely he has less than a hundred dollars in a day which he says is barely enough to pay for the things he needs. So 
the Taxi and, and Limousine Commission in New York decided they voted for a pay increase in 20 December, I think December 2022. Yeah, December 2022. Well, guess what happened? Who back kicked against it? And they said, this will add increased costs to our business. And they went to court and got the and got the judge to actually rule in their yeah. favor. Mm-hmm. Yes, finally the price was increased, but, but not as by 10%. You expected. It was just by 10%. But and Exactly. I know you forget that this happened. So the using the, the um, TLC decided to vote for a, a pay or a fair increase was because there was increased um, costs in the US. So inflation caused by um, the aftermath of COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war was uh, one of the things that caused. I think it was last year or was it this year? And we are hearing about rising energy costs, especially in, in, in Europe and the US. Uh, okay, earlier this year so that that was that was like one of the reasons they asked for this and yet uber went so it was uber that did it but the the cost uh would affect everyone and the driver the the company said oh fine we are okay with a 10 percent increase but what you guys were voting for was way more than 10 percent and too much so it's whether these guys go back on go back to strike it would be important for them to look at all the possible factors that come into um like the cost determines that yeah what, what determines the cost it would be important to look at it and maybe relax some of their demands because if you tell uber to um, if you tell uber to reduce the commission then that will effectively reduce their revenue mm-hmm. yeah. Which, and they're already not making profits i don't please. know it doesn't look like something anybody will jump at. <laughs> so before we move on to the next story, did you tell us, because I know that they are probably going to go on under strike. Mm. So what's up with that? How have their negotiations with the government, I mean with, with their people gone? How has it gone? So uh, I think the first the first few days of the strike, they, they mentioned meeting with Bolt and they said Bolt has agreed to implement a, some of their demands. So they had a lot of demands apart from the fair increase, but they said uh, both has agreed to implement some of it, and they are still waiting for the results. So the only the challenge is that the biggest demand here is this particular um, fair <laughs> increase, and that's the most important demand in a way. So that hasn't been done, and I I I I think we mentioned I don't know if I mentioned it, but apparently there was there was like a little bonus. That was supposed to encourage them to come back, yeah, or heard about those of that. them who were going on strike to come. Well, they said the bonus was too small, and I think it was, I think six thousand naira, but it was dependent on certain how conditions. How many rights you do? Yeah, so that. Um, they were. That was one. They also asked them to. Uh, what was what was the second thing that Boot did again? Yeah, Boot actually increased the base fare, and I think Uber did the same as well. But um, we are still going to wait. They are probably still in negotiations with both Uber and all of that, but it's probably well. Let's see what happens in the next few weeks if they return to the if they return to the strike or not. Let's all see. the best to them. I don't know if I want to wish them. I don't know no, if I want them to get me, every guess. So, but it's all the best to me. them. Yeah, all the best. They'll be fine. They will be very very fine. So yeah, moving on to the next story. Um, you're hearing that Nigerian banks. Have been fined 200 million naira for data privacy violations. Very, very interesting story. <laughs> so apparently, the new National Data Protection Commission is doing its work fast, fast. Thankfully, should I say thankfully? Should we say thankfully? Oh. Well, um, if you are a data privacy buff, I need to just uh, what, if if that's your cup of tea. <laughs> I'm actually, everybody should be. Everybody should be concerned about data privacy. Concerned about actually, data privacy because if they see data breach, mm. uh, and then the data is out there, anybody can see it. Your bank app and so you yeah. compromise, and people can just take off. So everybody should really be concerned about uh, our data privacy. So definitely, yeah. I, I I take it as a good news for for Nigerians. Yeah, so um, back to the story. So they've been fined $200 million. We don't know which banks because the NDB, NDPC is not telling us which banks are being fined. But they said that they've been investiga- investigating them for over a year. 
So it is not something that they just stood up and said, okay, let's do something. And yeah, that's what's happening with them. So that they will probably be finding even more people soon. So well, <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not just banks. Yeah. There's a number of institutions that will find. Yes, yeah, so there's banks, some other institutions, but they just didn't, they didn't just tell us who it was that was fined. They are just, I think I don't know why they are keeping those things themselves. Well, I, I guess it's it's to protect the businesses in the way. So if you hear that your bank had data privacy issues, so that your first instinct is to move. <laughs> yeah, you may. <laughs> But they, it's they also it's trust. important for me as a customer to know what bank I can trust. Well, and what institutions I can trust so. because I'm not going to put my money or give a, an institution that doesn't know how to keep my data um, safe, my data, mm. my information. Yeah, it might have to do with the uh, um, the scenario or causes of the data breach in the first place. Mm. If it's okay, yes, these people are just. It happened negligence yeah. or stuff like that. So that might be, I don't know, just... Uh, yeah, just so saying. some of the things they said that they did was that they captured people's data wrongly so people could not access their phones. So like, that one, it's it's tricky because oh, yeah. if, I, um, if, I, if I go to my bank for mm-hmm. my uh, BVN capture, it's the data that I give them mm. that will be inputted. Yeah. So... How is that the uh, resp- so if I tell you my name is Olayinka? Okay, so the full name is Olayinka, and I tell you it's Yinka mm. because there is no Ola before it, I can't access my phone. So, should I be should the company, I mean, should the uh, bank. bank now be the one responsible of me? Well, that's your that's uh, that's your that's fault. my uh, hey, but then so which is why I say like saying that the banks captured um. The, it's what you the, give them to what, is what mm-hmm. you give to them that mm-hmm. they yeah yeah but there's also the fact that sometimes okay for example now um yesterday we went to see bulu at the hospital and when i got to the receptionist i asked them i came to see i'm i'm here to see bulu abiodun the lady was confused this bulu i said bulu she said is it bola i said no it's bulu a patient a patient i went upstairs and they actually wrote bola on his card he told them bolu they have his hmo his hmo has bolu so i think okay. it's everybody's fault i uh, think everybody yeah, has yeah, yeah. The, and th- th- yeah. it's, it's that, tricky that, that, that to counts. say whose fault it is in cases like this because so except if, except all interactions are captured you can't really say that so for example i know that uh, when you go to get your international passport it asks you to confirm yeah. the data they have yeah. so mm-hmm. And I, I, there's usually a CCTV camera in the, in those rooms. So, yeah, I think I saw one. There, there's a CCTV camera there, so it captures those does interactions. Does it work? Well, hopefully it does. <laughs> but if the interactions are, are not captured, like this example, how do I know that Bully um, wasn't half drunk and told them Bola, <laughs> and that was, or maybe they themselves were sleeping? Okay, it's under the weather. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it might so not pronounce the name properly, the name properly, properly. and then get captured and yeah. i will not want to confirm that okay this is a bull or this is a bola mm-hmm. mm-hmm. but then bull and bola that seems like seems it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but the um the new commissioner the new ndpc the new data protection commissioner his name is dr latunji i don't want to pronounce your name he's in sent or latunji yeah so he's taking this opportunity to one MDAs is taking the opportunity to warn everybody that is supposed to handle people's data that we are coming for you. So if you are, well, that's actually right because me um, trusting my data with you, mm-hmm. because it's my data mm-hmm. and most of it are uh, privacy issue, and then you re- just making it available. <coughs> Sorry, uh, not knowingly. Or even knowingly, I mean, knowingly without having, say, the proper security measures in place to prevent uh, breaches um, and stuff like that. Yeah. So then you should be held responsible. Yeah. Because it was not just the whole name thing. There was also issues, um, there were also cases where people got their money unauthorized, I mean, deducted for, um, um, deducted wrongly because. <laughs> 
So mm-hmm. ah, what's mm-hmm. happening? And en- enter back and carry mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. <laughs> And I find it's really interesting, you know, because I think was it last week the new president Bola Metinubu signed the new Data Protection Act, and um, so I think if last last year I wrote a story about um, the new Data Protection Bureau. So apparently that is what is now the NDPC. If you go to the website, if you go to ndpb.gov.ng, it's no more NDPB, it's now NDPC. So that's why Olatunji is actually the new commissioner. So they've basically subsumed that into all of that. So the new law actually makes provision for all of these things. If your data is breached, you have to report. That's one thing that is actually very important because if... Now, it's not just um, the, the consumer that has to do the whole thing. The, com- the company has to report that, okay, there's a breach or this is what's happening. Or they have to tell NDPC that this is what's happening. And which is right. Which is, which is what is they are supposed to do. So I just Accountability. Yeah, I just hope that these companies are actually going to do that. Okay, look at, for example, Patricia. They had a hack recently. And we are hearing stories that it happened, like, how many? Over last year? year Over a year ago. And they're just telling us now. So, so it could be the same uh, uh, case of saying the ND, they are saying there are a number of banks and institutions that have data privacy issues mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and not naming them. So, yeah. the reason why Patricia might not have said, okay, yes, we have data, uh, uh, we've been breached, it's saying that at that time, it's a case of you just go into your account and try to move all your funds, which mm-hmm. could eventually uh, uh, affect their business and they don't want to they don't want, they don't want to do that it's just okay yes. they just try and uh, uh, manage the situation mm-hmm. and i'm sure by the time they announce or make that thing known they already like manage it and everything is right yeah 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 uh i hope that everything turns out fine i hope that because i know that a lot a lot of experts are worried about how this is going to be implemented and obviously we are already seeing it's been implemented so uh, well, it's just a case of saying that everybody should uh, uh, uh be on a lot so you're a company that handles a lot of uh, uh people's data just to have a data called data protection, data officer. protection uh, uh, officer to make sure that yes Everything is intact and you are safe. You, your cons- customer or users' data. I'm just wondering if is there a, a provision in the bill or the act that says every company that deals yes. with customer data must have a data. Yes, yes, it is there. But if you don't have one, they are going to find you. Yeah. Mm. Two two years ago, uh, the company Start up lawyer idea, data protection as a service. <laughs> I mean, people are doing CFO no, no, no. as if a you, service. If you, if you have a company lawyer, in fact, mm. so I think then, it was 20, 2019 or early 2020 or thereabout. So, a uh, uh, company lawyer also, so, no, is it the company lawyer? We had a meeting, like all t- head of department means, okay, yes, are you collecting? So far, you are collecting people's data. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come and yeah, also to fill one document like that to read it and a lot of back and forth. Mm-hmm. Back and forth. So this are like so yes, you do this and then tell you okay, this are to put in place to make sure that things go according to plan yeah. and then you don't have any breaches and stuff like that. So hmm. okay. well, so for companies that need to actually like go and get their get their company data protection, um, what's it called? Is it a D- DPCO? Um, real, um, there's a certain yeah compliance, so you can go to the NDP, ndpb.gov.ng website. You would see um, a place to actually start the process. If you want to report it that your 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 company is not a big company is not giving allowing you to change your data, you can report. There's so many things you can do on the website. So please check out the website if you actually care about your data. So, <laughs> yeah. So moving on. Um, we are living in Nigeria now. We are moving to Somalia. Chimgo's dream says Somalia has, yes. Somalia has gotten a new QR code standard. So why should we care what's happening with that story? Okay. Um, so yes, they've got a new QR code standard. Why should we care? So uh, why should why we should care? It's because it's Somalia, basically. It's African. And it's African, yes. Okay. So I, I think 
all of us here probably grew up with this image of Somalia as a, com- a country that was always at one conflict or involved in one conflict or the other. And what that what happens in such serious conflicts is um, vital infrastructure is destroyed. So telecommunications, finance, transportation, basically all the infrastructure you need to have a functioning economy. Mm-hmm. And uh, Somalia has been they've been had they've been hit very hard by this so um from 1991 to about 2009 they didn't have a functioning central bank and that impacted them so you couldn't just send money easily you couldn't receive money easily you couldn't make payments yeah and you could even send money so let's say you're a somali outside the country it was difficult for you to send money home so those were some of the challenges that they had but since 2009 that the CBS the Central Bank of Somalia was sort of reinstated they've been working really hard to ensure that they get the com- the country back to its feet and basically make it very easy for people in the country to have financial transactions basically so um they started i think about 3 years ago they they launched a national payment system making it easy for you to send money across all the banks in the country So that was that was the first step and um, recently I think in March March this year they announced that all banks in the country I think about 14 banks in the country now use the international bank account numbers so with that it's easy for them to sort through transfers transfers can be done faster than it used to be so those are some of the changes that we've been making so if um if you if, I mean if you were paying attention I think sometime last month Kenya also launched a QR code standard. So Kenya is like another East African Kenya, country. Kenya it's when it comes to financial services in yeah. Africa. Kenya the very largest since. Yeah, we are. So on its own link. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yes. So I, I I so the thing is uh it's very difficult to like get a lot of data about Somalia. One thing I could find is the population, 60 million people. Um but the So why 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 I was interested in this story was for two major reasons. Uh it's is a QR code. It's not just any other payment system. A QR mm-hmm. code and I found out that about 73% of the population use mobile money because that's what helps with um transactions transfers. Yeah. Want to say something? Internet penetration in the country is 2%. Yes. As of uh, 2017. 2017. 2017 according to International Telecommunication um, Union. Yeah. So that's that's why it's interesting, right? If you have a an internet penetration, okay, let's so let's say somehow somehow you've had a 10% or maybe 10% growth every year and you've gone from that 2%. Let's be generous and say 40%, which is a huge still, leap. Still, so the uh, um, mobile cellular subscription is mm. about 8.8 million, million yeah. and that mobile so it doesn't mean that you have um, individual like is unique it's yeah. unique and mm. also doesn't mean they all have internet access yeah. Yeah. so it could just be people using um feature phones feature mm. phones yes so that's th- those are some of the reasons why i think it's an interesting development so interesting in the sense that um it's this is a country that has a, like there's a serious need for mm. a very good financial infrastructure because uh, as we all know finance uh, the the financial infrastructure of the comp- of a country is is like the backbone of the economy without it you can't you can't sell you can't buy things mm. and it affects everything so that's why i was looking at that story and yes like you mentioned low internet penetration we don't have data for smartphone penetration which people would use to scan this barcode and the governor of the central bank of somalia um, he 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 talked about this being a move to accelerate um, somalia to a cashless society and got me curious because how do you go cashless when like this is madly fro- frogging here how do you go cashless it reminds me of african governments and them being out of touch with the reality of mm-hmm. the citizens because that is not my problem i don't want to go ca- I like i don't have money in the yeah. first place so access first yeah so before the just first. before now i was looking I, i saw some data about payment methods globally um i don't know if i can still find it but i can't remember the country but this is a country in europe and um, qr code 
has so between I think 2020 to 2022 QR code payments has just gone from 0.0% to 0.6%, which doesn't look like a lot of growth if you're asking me. And an African country with low internet penetration, low smartphone penetration wants to drive a like wants to drive cashless, cashless policy using QR, QR codes. codes. And I don't know why they decided they decided that this was a, a a policy direction that they would they would pursue. But it looks like you're doing all the wrong things because first of all, um, you will need a lot of infrastructure mm -hmm. which these individuals probably do not own. Yeah. In fact, infrastructure, the infrastructure, it's so when actually I, on the part of the, of people. the users. Yeah, that's, that's the, it's that's slightly the on the part of the people. Because they need phones. Your smartphone. I don't mm. think a uh, feature, um, smart feature phone, or those... Um, now nah. feature phone with a little bit of smart yeah i don't think they i don't think they have they the they don't. Uh, except there may be third party apps maybe that can i think most of them don't even have third party apps the only no they do so they have no, like, maybe like on WhatsApp, the on the play store Facebook that you can download to do the play store is lim like it's it's very it's limited a lot of limitations to for those kind of for feature smartphones so i don't think they will have the because you take pictures with it and the picture is looking <laughs> all blurry. So how would that yes. now read? <laughs> Thank you, how could? Could. Yeah, that's it. That, so, I mean, those are legitimate questions. Yeah, so really. a, a, um, say USSD is it's perfect. Yeah, it's, it's, it's perfect. It's very good. I can, so I can use it with, on with any smartphone. It's 8.8 million. So imagine, let's say, okay, yes, 8.8 .8 million, about say 4 or 5 million of that mm -hmm. of... Uh, five million of them are unique subscribers. Mm -hmm. How many of them possibly use uh, feature and phones? Feature phone, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even if they don't use feature phones, so far they are unique subscribers. Mm -hmm. Feature phone, smartphone, mm -hmm. yes. Then you know, like, how many of those are actually need these services? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this especially when you consider that a lot of the population in Somalia live in rural areas. It, like a huge percentage of the population so, live in rural areas they are on i think um the employment rate is around 40 something percent according to um data from their Bureau of statistics i think around 40 something percent like it's not up to 50 percent so, so they are putting the cards before the horse so like. something around ussd if they don't have that already mm. will, will do way more better. better yeah will have more impact on their uh, financial system than say let's just dump the standard, like. well um i mean african countries are always shooting for the moon and hoping they land on is it, is it shooting for the sun i'll be at this is it shooting for the moon i hope you land on the stars but yeah, i don't okay, think they're yeah, going to land yeah, on any stars <laughs> <laughs> landing on it no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but i my like Yinka said, I think that they are just they are doing things that they should not be doing at a certain time. Yes, mm. okay, it's important to have a QR code standard, but what is the reality of the citizens that are supposedly serving? Do they even have money for you to even start a cashless payment? Like it's it's just I don't know, it's just it's you know it's it's, it's, it's African just, countries, just, please do better. Help us do better. Help Let's so that so that we will not come on this podcast this and we're always bashing so you. Yes, please is, here's the thing. Even if even if you did a QR code, decided to do a QR code policy in Nigeria, you will still be I mean, you're not really I, I don't think you will move the needle from a okay, yes, is a is a is a more like it's it's an easier mode of transaction compared to maybe a bank transfer mm -hmm. or or maybe a POS payment. It's slightly easier. It's like I just need to use internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you use the internet, but for example, I don't need to put in a oh, okay, 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 yeah. You, and all you of scan that. I just scan and, then it gets and I make mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that uh, is uh, slightly uh, easier. But I do not think that a lot of Nigerians will rush at yeah. That, that. Like, there are a lot of um <laughs> big attitude when it was when they started it was mm -hmm. like yes just kind of but what's the usage i mean and that's nigeria a country that is like our internet penetration depending on um who you ask it's high well Let's let's let this let this Somalia to their QR code um, was and their cashless payments was. Let's come back to Nigeria. We're hearing that Airtel has launched five G in Nigeria. Yes, with yeah. a lot of <laughs> with a lot of you know, a lot of um, and love letters written between dragging. 
So that would be. Let's not. It's not a love letter, they please. They dragged each other. Each other. No, well, no, no. So I here's mean, what happened. I think MTN when he, when um SL announced it, MTN yeah. congratulated them and like, oh, welcome to the welcome market. To the club. Mm-hmm. Etel responds with another image and they're like, oh, you have tried, we have come to take over and I'm like, uh-uh, yeah. be gracious, be gracious. Stop can, my name, <laughs> <laughs> can they really take over? That's over. What are you even taking share? over? Oh, sorry. Exactly. <laughs> uh, what do you want to take over? <laughs> like, I what happened with 5G? 5G phones uh, or have 5G SIM cards? No, but there are some phones that uh, that have the capability. I mean, but how many people are using? Never yeah, using those phones because I can tell you for free that my own phone does not. It doesn't support five. If you ask everybody support, in this so. office, I can tell you that so they don't use five G phone. Do we really need five G? I don't know. I'm yeah, that's asking. another question. Just, I think we've talked about just, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just but asking. do we need it? But it's really nice, at least. So, Eta will be the third. Um, yeah, I believe. Telecom. Third. Yeah. yeah. MTN. Mafab. Um, Mafab. And now. Um, yeah. And yes, that's it. really it's really it's really nice. So then it makes you wonder why the likes of Glow is not like saying <laughs> like let <laughs> me let me join the club. I think that was more a function of how the auction went. Because when they are doing the auction, I think all of them made a bid or something and it was the people that were willing to pay the money yeah, that, that got Yeah, that was yeah. when because I know MTN and Airtel I don't remember if it's Salad tried to beat. I've been Nine Mobile, sorry. Sorry, oh, Nigerian in me. I don't remember if Nine Mobile tried to beat, but I know that Glow did. And yeah, didn't it, didn't work, it didn't work out. I mean, they may be able to get it in a few months or maybe in a few years. By next year, they may be, they may be the new guys. Yeah, maybe the need for it might have arised by then. Yeah, probably a lot more people are. <laughs> I don't know about that because okay, what are our four G numbers looking like? First of all, what is three G looking like before we even come yeah, to five G? This is where you assess two G. So yeah, a lot of places you can. I mean, this is Nigeria, so <laughs> a lot okay. of places where you can. Access uh, you just see it as a win, depending on who is claiming the win. Well, if it, <laughs> if it adds if it adds some something significant to their bottom line in terms of maybe revenue or numbers, it really? could be good. Well, like I don't know, they would they are the ones who have who own the business. They can see their numbers better. So if it gives them extra revenues, like significant revenue, that may be you know that would be a win for them. But it could also be an investment into the future if if I'll use that to them. Mm. So you will not get the wins of five G for now yeah. because you're operating in Nigeria and people still need to catch up to it. And I'm not even sure it's prevalent in other well I say more developed countries. I, I still don't think it's prevalent. So it's probably an investment that, oh fine, we have five G yeah. now. We can offer it to customers who demand it and hopefully over the next few years a lot more people will get it. So I'm assuming that the longer it takes, the more expensive the bid for the license w- would get. So maybe getting it now is a better option for you. Also, on the bottom line, <coughs> I don't think I've seen um, MTN's uh, report since. Yeah, that's one thing I'm curious really about. Love to look at their report to see if there's any traces of impacts of 5G. 5G Especially license, because of the strategy they used to enter the market because I think when they came in, they said it's for the home. They are, they are going to the home. So yeah. how is that helping them? I've not, I, I think I've been, I was seeing ads at that time, radio jingles and all that. I think I, I still saw some, I still listened to a radio ad a couple mm. weeks ago. Yeah, they're Maybe still going days. on. They're still going on. So, like how is it translate? I know it probably won't yeah. like show immediately, but how is it translating like for them now? I'm really good for their report to see if there is a correlation between. Because it would really be nice to really know. Okay, yes, is this really? Yeah, I um, mean, you know, Nigerians we have, have money that we don't know. But then <laughs> it's um, just something to to just see. I mean, so yes, we're saying maybe there's no need right now, but it could be that there are people who they are finding really good use cases for it yeah, and the, MTN is... The jingles I heard, they are advertising for um, gig workers, those who are working from home and use 
lot, a of, lot internet, of internet internet especially those that are working for people abroad and all of that so maybe that's their target market yeah definitely i know mm-hmm. someone that says doing over one terabyte on mtn 5g no okay of internet in a month <laughs> so what just pops into my head is that okay so apart from the pricing let's take it let's let's take out the pricing of it now why should i use a starlink and why should i use a 5g of us yeah an mtn 5g or any of them 5g oh, over starlink wow. when it rains it pours <laughs> <laughs> yeah people say when it rains starlink is like it's really bad it's starlink, it's so. <laughs> so maybe that i don't know if no i don't think rain should affect um no, 5G. 5G. I don't know. Uh, so uh, let me not uh, because I've noticed that every time it rains, MTN, all of them, their network just becomes very weird. So we can't even when, man, even when it's even when oh. it's only shining. Well, I don't think it's as <laughs> no, I don't think it's as bad as the rain, and then it rains, and then you go on Twitter and you see Starlink people. <laughs> Like, but then I mean, you're asking why, why M25G are not mm-hmm. the price. price. Uh, I said that's what I said, apart from the price, because uh, I know that, that price you put apart, <laughs> <That's laughs> so put it back, uh, put it back, please. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I think it's yeah, how much 50k, right? <laughs> yeah, MTN. 50k for MTN, MTN, yeah. get the yeah. and we have like About 400k, 400 dollars. Is it four hundred dollars or no? I think they are charging in naira now, so oh. I think it is about. I'm not sure, so don't quote me on this. But I think it's like two hundred k now to get a route to get a starting. Mm. If it's like everything, so first yes, installation. first installation. Let me and see if I can quickly see. Check if, their website, Abby. Yeah, because if it's two hundred k, then for some people. It may not really it's may not be an issue because yeah. it's maybe four times the actual price. But mm. if it's two fifty k, four hundred k, then twenty five k every day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um. I, I've I've not found the. Price. I've not found the price. Think well, I think it's about two hundred. Three hundred seventy-eight thousand. Uh, the price difference is still that gap. It's a lot. Still, so, so I'm right. seeing last time on four. the website here, yeah. mm. hardware cost three hundred seventy-eight thousand, then thirty-eight thousand naira per month. Ah, yeah, so it's, so it's a it's a lot. The difference oh, is a lot. Thirty-eight thousand per month. Yeah. So how much is five G? I mean, MTN five G subscription. I don't know. I don't know. And I think and they don't have unlimited bundles, which is very annoying. Ah. Uh, Wait, it's not unlimited. Yes. Interesting. They said that they are not doing unlimited bundles. People should go and I watch. Because you go and watch the interview you might had with Adia so so you you get it. Yeah. So yeah, talking about MTN, um, you're hearing that in MTN Cameroon they are having really um, big issues. Yeah. Issue that story store. is that story is just weird. It's very weird because apparently it's not even MTN that is in trouble. It is the fact that there's an there's a Cameroonian um, businessman. His name is Amadou Baba Dampulu, and he's one that is taking a separate entity that has nothing to do, do with MTN. MTN to court. That is like, how did we get to okay. that? So the entity that was taken to court does mm. he have a relationship with MTN? So um, sort of. Okay. So. So um, the entity that was taken to court is first National Bank of South Africa, and um, so there is a South African connection because MTN is South, South African, African. So mm. they are using that. That's the only. Reason. That's the only. Reason. And I'm like, why <laughs> are you so petty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's seriously, it's causing a lot of ah. problems for MTN Cameroon because now they are considering layoffs. They are considering um, yeah, their cutting are, down. Uh, yes, because their funds are they, their funds have been frozen since last year, so it's not making business operating easy for yeah, them. It's not wise to say let's bring funds from another market to nah. fund. It's very uh, possible uh, that they even freeze the money as it's coming. <laughs> But yeah, all the best to MTN Cameroon. I hope that they are able to find a solution to their problem, even though I don't think it's going to come anytime soon. But I think what other stories are we, are we mentioning? Um, also, MTN again, they're accusing IHS stars of breaching an agreement. So there's something about them. 
let me see if I can remember the story correctly now. So MTN is a shareholder in IHS Stars, and uh, now they want to increase their voting rights. They currently have a twenty six percent stake or something. They want to increase their voting rights, so they are trying to. They have made a proposal to to the board, and so I think on June seventh or something, they're supposed to have. IHS was supposed to have their AGM and the proposal was supposed to be presented and they refused to present the proposal. <laughs> so MTN is like, uh uh-uh, what's happening? Why are people trying to spoil our market? So they are calling for an extraordinary general meeting to a, discuss the proposal. So that's basically what's happening with that. Um I wish them the best. I don't know how that is going to work because the way it's so fun fact, IHS actually owns five thousand seven hundred and one towers owned by MTN. They paid cash cool cash for that mm. i think about wait those five thousand is across all their markets i don't like i don't i'm not sure about that i'm not sure but they own five thousand seven hundred and one towers so i want to see how that dynamic is going to work with the oh, but then for the fact that they have 20 over 20 percent is taken 26 percent that's likely going to make them one of the uh major mm-hmm. uh, shareholders so yeah. at least that definitely that that might also be the reason why they are um, making demands for yeah. increase. Yes, they said they have yes, been discussing have for like months, even before. Okay, not even months before because IHS IPO'd in 2021. So even before the IPO, they have been trying to get them to, to get more to do all of that, and it didn't work out. So I wish them all the best. I hope it works out for them. And I think one of the last missions we have is Google for Startups is, has awarded $4 million to 25 Afghan companies for instead Black Founders Fund court. Um, I think, um, which countries are on the court? I think... Um, so it's, it's across Africa. Yeah. Yeah, Nigerian companies. Kenya, I think Nigeria has the highest number, about 20. 10. Kenya, um, I think there's Tanzania also. But there, it's not just one... It's not just one country that is there, and um, I think about seventy-two percent of the cohort is female. She that's female-led. yeah, female-led, <laughs> yes. That's nice. But what I noticed is that the number of startups reduced. Yeah, it reduced from, from last year. Last year to this year, I think. Oh, so they are following YCs. It's the yes. same amount. They yeah, give them the same. No, no, so no. I mean the num. You said number of startups. Yes. yes. Why is also reduce the number of startups? But yeah. it's the same amount that they are sharing across. They even increased it before. It used to be fifty k. Now they are giving mm. them up to one fifty, in addition to the Google credit. No, but it's not. Is it all money or it's part of the support? There's two hundred k for Google credits and a few other things. Then I think they get up to one fifty k that is equity free. Oh, okay. So the numbers are Nigerian grantees ten, Kenyan five, South African three, um, Egypt, Ghana two, Uganda two, Cote d'Ivoire one, Rwanda one, and Senegal one. Okay. So how many startups in total? Uh, I think it's 25. 25, okay. Yeah, 25. Then what they get, what they get is 4 million in funding and support to help them expand their operations. Then up to $150,000 in on non-dilutive cash awards and up to $200,000 in Google Cloud credits, advertising support, one-on-one mentoring from industry experts and invaluable co- connections within Google's network. Well, congratulations to all of them. I hope they That'd use the everything. System. Yeah. Well. Yeah, so yeah, um Nika, yeah. you have a report for us. <laughs> <laughs> you should actually be playing like a victory dance kind of thing right now. <laughs> Why? Yeah, so I don't bother about this mic we know. Eh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um first, uh new website is up and running yes. this Monday. Yes, since Monday, though I just subtly change uh change the the link on uh, social media. I think yesterday or two days ago. Mm. Yeah, but uh the big one is the report that we've been working on since last year is finally out. Mm. I was there a couple of episodes for a couple of episodes sharing yeah, the figures yeah. from the report. Mm-hmm. Yes, so yes, it's finally out, and you guys should check out those partnership episodes. with um with Money Point. Um, yes, so the report is finally out. Like, stuff you want to know about the Nigerian financial service space is basically there. 
uh, um, the regulatory uh, authorities, regulatory frameworks, policies, um, insight from industry stakeholders. Mm-hmm. Like, just so we, we can get reports, just go to the website. Yeah, just go to intelpoint.co. Keep that in your head, intelpoint.co. And you get that and every other report that we've released. So we have the FIFA World Cup report. We have the African Startup Funding Report for 2022 and a whole lot of other ones that you can assess. Yes, and where I did it's also subscribe to Yinka's newsletter. He does not disturb every <laughs> Monday, yeah, right? It's just, yes, every Monday, just once a week. Yeah. Uh, but this week I sent two actually. One on Monday and then one yesterday to announce uh, because all you do is we we'll give people that are subscribers early access to to our report. So yes, yes. Yeah, so subscribe to Inka's newsletter. And on the subject of newsletters, we have um, fintech today. We have the workaholic. So and we also have our flagship newsletter, yeah, Tech Point Digest. You can subject subscribe to all of that. We will put a link in the description for you to subscribe. And I think that's basically it. Is there anything we forgot to mention today? No, yeah, you can get it online. Sorry, if you are an audio. Oh, yeah. So, yes, thank you everyone for staying up until this point. I don't know how many minutes we spent so far, but we are very sorry. We know we promised that we would make the podcast shorter, but we are still working on it. So, we continue yeah, yeah. to work on it. And um, as you can see, we are in the new setting. I think I forgot to mention that at the end. I'll be at the beginning. Yes. And your new setting. So dispensation. Tell us what you think about the new setting in the comments. And Chingos Dream, do you want to do the honors? Tell us where we'll find the podcast. Sadly, Bully is not here to do that <laughs> shit that he does. Google so podcast. there's Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, I had radio, Stitcher, and everywhere else you get your podcast. Yes, and don't forget to like and subscribe to this video on youtube and also comment intelpoint.co please <laughs> all right bye everybody bye bye bye